Congressman, we're, do we're doing things unusually tonight, but I think it's time two years into this so-called recovery, almost to the day, we've got problems. Why don't people still acknowledge the magnitude of those problems? I guess they still still believe that government's going to take care of them, that somehow cover, Congress will pass uh, more appropriation bills and the checks will keep coming and the Fed can bail out everybody. They really believe it because, in a way, the deception continues because we are still running up debt and we're still printing money and foreigners are still taking our dollars. So it's, it still works. But the, the other part of government being way too big and being able to really pay for it, that's where the problem is. We, we can't pay for it because we're not producers anymore. We only can borrow and we can only print money. And that's a dead end. And, uh, but as long as people will loan or as long as the printing presses run, we're going to drive ourselves into a much deeper hole. So this is not a bit of a surprise to me. You know, they talk about the potential of a double dip a couple of years ago. And I kept thinking, well, maybe, maybe there will be government statistics that will talk about double dips. But there's one big dip that's been going on. And I think the big dip has actually started about 10 years ago with the standard of living for average people, good jobs going overseas. And people aren't getting richer. Uh, richer. The people who had their uh, stocks uh, uh, demolished over the past 10 years. So it, it isn't improving. But I think the basic problem is they never figured out why we got in this trouble. Well, and I actually, think that well has... they haven't even figured out that, that spending hasn't fixed it. So well, I guess what I'm asking you, Congressman, and this is a theme that I know you're running for president on. It's something that you and your son Rampal, the senator for Kentucky, have been raising that is the notion of not only cutting spending it but hacking spending uh, substantially so uh, but even with the severe hacking both of you have, have looked at and proposed it's it's relative chump change in the scheme of things I think in your son's case uh, 500 billion off the bat in a one and a half trillion dollar deficit that still leaves it at north of a trillion dollars that's how big our problems are yeah. and yet we don't even see how big our problems are no, and look how uh, Paul Ryan got hit by making some absolutely, suggestions, absolutely. too. But, uh, y you know, I, I just think that uh, maybe we do, maybe we word it incorrectly because it's always cut this, cut this, and cut this. Maybe if we said, well, we'd rather have the people spend the money, don't take it out of the economy, let the people spend this money. Because I do talk about, I, I don't put on the top of the list cutting health care. I put on the top of the list some of this foreign stuff, and I say, why shouldn't that money be spent back here by the people? And I think they can visualize this a little bit better, and, and literally that is what the case we want. We don't destroy wealth by stopping the spending by government. We produce more wealth because it gets into the hands of the people and better decisions are made. Because but we don't, we we don't allow... do that. I mean, and I'm not blowing you smoke, Congressman, because whether people agree or disagree with you, no one can deny how ahead of the curve you were on all of this stuff. And I admire anyone who risks a great deal of wrath doing that sort of stuff. So, so my, my hat's off to you on that.